Here we are living that quarantine life with the new Element 6! Uh, this is our first show here in Quarantine Live, and uh, right now you see just me. So let's go ahead and see uh, who we have here today. It's me, Mari! Hello. How do you know this, just you? You don't know how it's being edited. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Mari. Maybe he's got us like Brady bunched onto the screen. You have no idea. Yeah, you don't know. That's the way we all became the Brady Bunch. Yeah, we should be Brady Bunched. No, I'm vetoing the Brady Bunch. No, we want to be Brady Bunched. I'm confused. That's not new. As you can see, we're all in our separate uh, locations, but uh, who do we have with us today? You got Mari! Joven! Lasercorn! Raw. Uh, Wes, but my camera fell, so hold on. <laughs> <laughs> we're keeping that. Wes! And so hinky! <laughs> and we are... New, New Elements! Elements. AKA! N-E-6! AKA! N-E-S! AKA? The Brady Bunch Biscuits! Brady Boys! And Mari. Nah, she's a boy. Mari's a boy. I'm a boy. I mean, I was speaking for me, but you know, whatever. As you can tell, we're still working on the whole pacing of quarantine life. We're trying this out. We're still here creating content for uh, all of you guys. And before we jump into the, the, the thick of it, we just want to thank all of our patrons again for being a part of this and supporting us. If you haven't already, there is a link down below to see all the content that we create there. There are extended versions of every single episode where you can get the video form in all tiers. Eventually, we do the audio only version of the extended show, so you can listen to that. That, but we have a bunch of cool stuff there on the Patreon, so go check it out and support if you can, if you'd like to, uh, because our Discord, as Flitz would say, is popping. Mari, why don't you tell all the kind people what they can expect from today's episode? Sure, sure, sure. We're gonna be doing a little bit of an icebreaker uh, game for you. Something that Sohinki came up with. Do you have a name for this? We called it Wrong Side of the Bed. I do like that. That's right, yes. Wrong Side of the Bed is the icebreaker game that we're gonna be playing today. Something that Sohinki came up with. And then we're gonna get into the main topic, which is uh, things that we might be doing wrong and we never really realized it until maybe perhaps uh, adulthood or uh, recently. And then we'll get into our any six questions, of course, and our favorite jovenisms. Uh, which, uh, shout out, and maybe we can throw up the image. We did see that people in Animal Crossing, I think West was the one that brought it to our attention. People started putting jovenisms up in their Animal Crossing homes. I've never been more hurt and proud at the same time. All right, well, let's jump into this icebreaker. Uh, uh, Sominky, why don't you tell us what what this is, uh, Wrong Side of the Bed. Yeah, so Wrong Side of the Bed is a game I came up with, and it's basically like you're going to narrate exactly what you would imagine. And it doesn't have to really be what you'd imagine, but you're imagining what it would be like to wake up in the life of blank person. For instance, I have Flitz, so when I go, it's going to be, what do I think Flitz's mornings are like? Well, do we have a volunteer to go first? Mari is very prepared, I've heard. So if Mari wants to start it off by narrating Joven. Okay, so my person is Joven. And so this is what I believe is his stream of consciousness when he wakes up. <clears throat> Let's set the stage. It's 9 a.m. His eyes open. The world is blurry. Is it sleep? A pause. He rolls his eyes around. Blink, blink. He sits up in bed, puts his glasses on. The world is still blurry, takes off glasses clean oily lens use corner of bed sheet make sure kate doesn't see she does not like when he does this the world is still blurry wait still drunk nope i'm healthy joven whole 30 joven wait am i who am i who's talking a pause shrugs coffee dogs so many dogs content nerd news nerd news i'm batman Ooh, hat I'm hat man. It's 9 a.m. His eyes open. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so dead on. <laughs> I like how it turned into slam poetry. We just heard what my morning is like, and now I uh, was lucky enough to roll So Hinky. I have seen So Hinky, um, I've gone to his place a number of times and gotten there as he woke up, so I feel like I've seen this morning already happen. So, <clears throat> 1 p.m. My alarm goes off. Hit snooze. 20 more times. 2 p.m. We should probably get going now. Rolls out of bed. Sees dog waiting by door. Soon, young pupper. Soon. Start the coffee. Must pull out all eight contraptions. Oh, where are they? They're hidden around the house. I must find them. Stream coming soon. Not ready. 45 minutes to make coffee. Now, young pupper. 
Now may we go to the outside world. Yet to pee here in the outside world. Nope, no, not there. No, not in the elevator. No, 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 no. Oh, ah, oh, damn. Dog peed in the elevator. Okay, take the elevator back upstairs. All right, coffee still being... Okay, where are the paper towels? Okay, back to the elevator. Paper towels, clean it up. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Catch the next elevator. I'm sorry, I'm cleaning it up. Okay, now we gotta go back outside. Oh, your dog's gotta poop now. Two hours later. Oh, I had a meeting, didn't I? I think I might be late to that. Oh, we'll get to it. Live stream starts. All of my energy is already consumed from my morning thus far. All I can do is the bare minimum of energy for this live stream. But alas, they will watch me play this game that no one else wants to watch to play. And here we are, Hunt Showdown, for the 200th time. Maybe this is the one. What was that Irish accent there for a second, gentlemen? The 200th time? He knows how I just randomly slip into an Irish accent all the time. <laughs> it's so natural for him. Uh, so I got Mari. I mean, I'm pretty sure I nailed this 100%. I know her pretty well, so. So let's just launch into it. I wake up, I take a swig from my bedside hydro flask, which contains the blood of at least three young virgins. I look out the window and do a brief journal entry while staring at the peasants on the sidewalk who appear as no more than ants. I summon the butler to brush my teeth while I leave at least six meaningful comments on Instagram posts. I wave to Pete, who is on his 17th set of 300 pull-ups. I check in with my Animal Crossing town or island, and I, I find a new fossil or whatever the hell it is people do in this game. Then I go for a brisk 12-mile jog, and in which I periodically stop and do pirouettes. I get back home and check in with NASA, who's left me several messages for some reason. I don't, want, <laughs> I don't really understand uh, why, but... I resolve those, and then I take one more swig of virgin blood, and I'm ready to start my day. Mari, is that pretty much 10 out of 10 absolutely accurate? I love it so much. What you said is exactly what I imagined. All right, so I got Wes. Um, as Jim and I, we're pretty in tune to each other. He is a variation, you know, the yin and the yang, so an alarm goes off. It's my Michael Buble alarm. I love him so much. I sing his songs on my stream. I had a late stream last night. My eyes are still closed. I open them. Hello, ceiling. What a good morning. I reach my right hand under my pillow. Something cold and steel at Sarah. Wrong hand. I reach my left hand under my pillow. A chocolate. It captures my dreams while I sleep. I eat the chocolate. I place my feet into my slippers on the floor waiting for me. They're pink bunnies. <laughs> good morning, bunnies. I skip to the bathroom and I urinate. Sitting down, I stand and weigh myself. I've lost so much weight this morning. I go into the kitchen. Man, am I hungry. Sure could use breakfast. It's a good thing I screen printed a breakfast maker. I hit the button. Breakfast is being made. I pick up my buster sword and I'll go out onto my balcony. 1,000 strokes with the buster sword. This body is going to be ripe, baby. I take a picture of my post-workout and I post it to my Instagram. Hashtag getting there. I eat my breakfast and I meditate before my next stream for the day. But not before. I checked the Taylor Swift Reddit. I hope she'd seen my messages. <laughs> Gotta check and see what Tay Tay's up to. <laughs> it's uh, my turn. I'm, I'm, I'm doing laser corn here. Uh, and I'm gonna be using kind of an announcer voice because I feel like laser corn has this epic life, right? First joke of the uh, segment. <laughs> <laughs> it begins with a dream, a dream of fire. Lasercorn stands atop a tall castle made from black stone. Lava flows from the castle moat into a town filled with Lasercorn's lifelong enemies. Haha, yes! Burn! Burn them all! Burn it all down! The screams of his mortal enemies can be heard from all around the burning landscape. We hear far off voices. Voices that sound like large men screaming like sc small children. All oh, my skin is melting! My bones are well melting! And then a very faint wake up. The ground beneath his feet begins to shake violently. The castle walls crumble and laser corn falls. Everything slows down. He yells, No! He wakes to an a, very, a very annoyed Brina, shaking him awake. <sighs> you were talking in your sleep again. Oh, sorry, love. Uh, you were burning people again. You really need to let those high school bullies go. Oh, I'll let them go into a pool of lava. Oh, he rises slowly from his bed. It's not for dramatic effect. His back just hurts. Ow, he mutters while holding his lower back. And then he hears one of his favorite sounds. Daddy! Tyler runs into the room to greet his favorite person in the entire world. Good morning, Daddy. Can we play games today? In a bit, buddy. 
Daddy needs his coffee first. He pours his coffee into a unicorn, custom unicorn mug that he crudely drew a laser on. His day continues as it normally does. Magic of the Gathering, a little bit of Smash Bros with Tyler. He does not take it easy on the child. Um, maybe let him win one? Absolutely not. No son of mine is getting a goddamn participation trophy. All of his victories will be earned. Otherwise, he might end up like Joven. Oh yeah, that was good. The alarm goes off. I shoot up in bed. I'm only wearing a snapback and nothing else. I do a front handspring out of bed, just free balling around. I turn to my computer, which has seven monitors on it, and sit down before getting dressed. Why? Because I'm ADD as f I turn on Ableton Live and all of the seven forums that I'm involved in, including something called the Young Priests for some reason. I respond to all the pertinent messages while simultaneously composing music. I then turn out of my chair because I realize I haven't eaten anything. I do a head spin, a cartoon tornado forms around me and all of a sudden I'm dressed, fly as hell. I don't know how everything matches, it just does. I then walk my way into the kitchen where I pour myself a bowl of Cheerios mixed with for some reason pasta bolognese and other various items of food that were from meals in the previous day and mash it all together. I find it delicious. I do mix my cereals. I don't usually just eat one cereal. So I, I, I mix my foods. So that's super duper accurate. Before we get into our main topic of things that we're probably doing wrong, we made a little special thing for you. Here you go. So the trailer for the newest installment of the Assassin's Creed franchise just dropped. It is Valhalla. And so of course I had to don the costume immediately following watching the trailer. Of course I'm hyped. It is Assassin's Creed. Not much is known yet about the main character, but I do know that it is a Viking raider and he very much looks like me. This is exactly what he looks like. We also see Odin a couple of times and I learned today that Odin is synonymous with the Raven. And of course, I think that'll be used in the, the game as like Eagle Vision, but perhaps it's Raven Vision. Um, but as I was doing my makeup, I realized that in that one scene, the main character has his makeup like this. And as I was drawing it on, I was like, whoa, more and more, it looks like Raven's feathers. So maybe that's an, an Easter egg. I'm not sure, but that was a fun discovery. Hopefully with all, everything going on with COVID, there aren't any delays but it's looking like it's gonna be out uh, holiday 2020. So cross our fingers, cannot freaking wait. Uh, I, I know that I'll be playing the crap out of this. Valhalla! All right, we're back with the, uh, with, with, our, with our theme of the day. Our episode is all about things that we might be doing wrong, but we never really took time to think about it. Now this could be either maybe uh, you've been singing a song with the wrong lyrics and no one's ever corrected you. Maybe there's something that you do in private that, uh, you know, you thought you've been doing correct this whole time, but actually society does it the other way. What are some stuff that maybe we do that might be on a, on a normal basis, but other people don't see us doing it? For example, like getting dressed after a shower. Does anyone put on a sh like their shirt first before underwear and pants? I do underwear. Yeah, underwear for me for sure. Well, underwear is in the top drawer, so underwear is usually first. I use socks first. You do socks before underwear? I start from the bottom all the way up. So I go socks, underwear, pants, bra, shirt. Really? I have to go in the order. I feel weird wearing socks when the rest of me is naked. After you get out of the shower, you're supposed to put on lotion. Then you put on underwear. Do y'all not put on lotion? I only lotion my hands and a little bit of my arm. I don't take care of myself. I'm supposed to. That's why black don't crack. Yeah, I was gonna say that that might be a, a thing because my wife uh, has me put, uh, like, give Tyler lotion when after his uh, baths. But, like, I'm like, why? You just get out of the bath and then you get dressed. And like, she's like, no, you got to do lotion. I'm like, I didn't know that. You have to trap in all that moisture. Uh, Kate's the same way. Kate has the skin of an angel and I feel like the rock monster. Yeah, exactly. It's good for your skin and it keeps you moisturized because the soap dries you out. I use Dove soap so it doesn't dry me out like that. So, you know, whatever. I think the water dries you out. Actually, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's just a, a thing that everyone should do. Uh, my thing that I found out that I probably do differently than everyone and I just, I don't know, I did it from when I was a little kid and I still do it as an adult. I stand up to wipe. <clears throat> all the way up? Can I tell you why that's so wrong? You can't get in there, man. You can't get in there. Do you have poop stains on all your underwear? You can't get all the way in there, man. I stand all the way up. Is that wrong to do? That's why we're doing this. Joe, I'm actually with you on this one. I, I also stand up. You all stand up? <laughs> 
<laughs> I can get in there. Do you stand all the way up? I stood all the way up when I was a kid. And then I was like, wow, you can't really wipe as well when you're standing up. I need to clarify. Are you like half stood up hunched over so that you can get in there? Or are you like... No, I stand up. This is a lot of information. Nah, you can't wipe as well, man. You, you got poop stains. Today's homework for all you guys. The next time you poop, stand up. If you were to stand up right now and try to scratch your butthole, you can. It's not like you can't touch your butthole. What was that? Butthole? Was there a T in there somewhere? No, just butthole. <laughs> I'm really trying to imagine it right now. But you have to dig. What are you talking about? Yeah, you gotta dig. I take my first uh, roll of like, you know, the to toilet paper that I use. I fold it once because, well, sometimes. And then you get a little dab on the front because, you know, there's gonna be a little drippage, so you catch that one. And then, you know, you fold it again, so it's nice and, you know, you don't want to get it on your fingers. And then... Maybe I'll like bend my torso a little bit, but I have no problem just like getting up in there. Wait, I have a question for everyone. Do you all do like the wrap around your fingers with toilet paper or do you bunch or do you like fold? Fold. Wrap around seems wasteful because you're not using the other side. I don't know. Unless you're giving your butthole the old back back swipe. Fold or bunch, yeah. Uh, you fold, fold mostly. There's that song, looking for the good stuff. Ba -da 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 -da. Tighten up on your backstroke. We're just gonna be talking about toilet paper. No, okay, first of all, Wes does it too. Yeah, you remember how I said this was supposed to be a, gonna be a short topic? No, we're gonna be on this for 20 minutes. Perhaps we should just say, Joven, you do it wrong and move on. Is that where we got it from? <laughs> Well, you say it's been very effective, but can I ask both of you a question? Do you own white underwear? Yes. I have a feeling you don't anymore. No, no stains at all. But also, I'm a large person. I can't get my hand in there while sitting down. Do you guys shower uh, in the morning or at night? Uh, evening shower, preferably, really. I like to feel clean when I'm going to sleep. A lot of people said uh, when I was growing up, looked at me weird, and they're like, night shower? No, you're supposed to shower in the morning. It's like first thing you do. I'm like, no, you get dirty during the day, and especially like I was in like sports and stuff. No, I, I'm not getting into bed with all the sweat and stuff. I'm gonna shower. Well, if you do shorts and sweat, if you're like sweating, then yeah, you take a shower at the night, but you, I, I, I don't know. My personal thing is I take a shower in the morning. I am cold all day long, and the only only time that my body makes like a ton of heat is when I'm sleeping. So I always sweat while I sleep. I don't know what it is. Or uh, not sweat, but like get overheated and I feel gross in the morning. I'm primarily a morning shower and it's not for uh, like cleanliness or whatever reason. It's because it helps me wake up. Like I hop in the shower and it helps me wake up. That's the main reason I do it. I have showered at night before and I like the feeling. Like the sheets feel better for some reason. I feel like after you just showered. If I try to shower at night, it wakes me up and then I can't go to sleep. When I don't shower in the morning, I feel dirty all day. If I can't go to sleep if I don't shower at night because I feel like I'm I'm all grimy in bed and I'm getting like dirt on my sheets and stuff. I just wash my sheets. I'm in afternoon. Uh, shower. I don't like to do the morning and I don't like to do the night. Like morning, I'm just like, I feel like I'm already behind schedule and like taking a shower is already gonna take a long time. I feel like I just put two and two together. Do you wipe standing up because you take your dumps in the shower? Answer me honestly. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's gross. A lot of people say you're supposed to, you know, and I understand the logic. You poop first, then shower. I love pooping after I shower. Oh, no, that's a day ruiner. How's <laughs> that a day ruiner? I call it the PSP, the post-shower poop. It's the, it's the worst thing ever. No, don't do that. Don't you dare. That's perverse. Why do you poop after a shower? You've ruined the shower. I'm so mad right now. I'm furious. No, because your body's still a little wet. Oh, it's great. I love it. Wes and Joven dumps in the shower. Just wipe your ass after you shower. Ew, no. You get poop all over yourself after you, you ruin the shower. You basically have to shower again. Joven, I feel this is way more controversial than the standing up, sitting down thing. That way we could forgive. Uh, Flitz, uh, do you do anything uh, while people aren't looking that that might be the wrong way? Well, okay, I guess the way you eat food is definitely the wrong way. No, the way I eat food isn't wrong. I've never eaten bolognese and cereal, though I... In support of Flitz, now I don't mix as, 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 uh haphazardly or or as freely as flits. I don't haphazardly is the wrong word. Let's say freely. But I I do enjoy mixing things. Like if I get a plate at a restaurant that's like for breakfast it's like scrambled eggs, bacon, potatoes, veggies, whatever. I m mash it all together and eat it always. Can I just say it sounded like so Hinky was subscri uh, was describing a breakfast when he said if he gets uh you know scrambled eggs and like potatoes and bacon. Yeah, the correct thing to do is if that's like a Denny's thing, you throw it all on the toast and eat it that way. That's all breakfast food mixed together and they're supposed to go together. 
Flit, Flitz mixes his breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, afternoon snack, night snacks, all together. Well, there's some things that, yeah, mix well. I just feel like with Flitz's plates, they're sometimes just like, all right, here's my macaroni and cheese and then my salad here on the side. And okay, just mix them all together. I'm like, stop it. Yeah, because ma macaroni and cheese salad. The vegetable, the greens, they add a different texture. But like, we've seen you crunch up chips and put it in your pasta. I think uh, the first time that I was like, oh wait, am I doing something wrong? Is when I I was uh, being babysat by my friend, my, my friend's mom, and uh, she would take us, us out to like shopping and stuff like that. And one time uh, she had, the mom had to go to the bathroom. So me and my friend were in like the one person bathroom with her. And I realized that, that, that this mom wiped from front, no, from, from back to front. And I had never seen that before, especially for women. That's like a super like no go. I realized when I was an, ad an adult because that's how you get UTIs because you get like bacteria from like your your backside into your front side, and that's a, that's a no no. You properly go from front to back like a. I honestly don't understand the mechanics of it. I understand the logic behind it, but I I don't do or have I don't have like thirty plus years. Yeah, you don't want the back to come into the front. Anyway, that's when I think I was probably like in the fourth grade and I was like, I had like an existential crisis because I was like, oh, how do I find out if I'm doing this wrong? And, and, and I don't know if I'm doing it wrong. So I, I think I was like just experimenting by myself for, for like a little while. And I'm just like, my whole world is crushing, c crumbling down because I don't know which one it is. I don't get it. But uh, I'm, as long as you think that you're doing it right, even though maybe you could be doing it wrong. I totally thought Marius was going to be like, I'm really embarrassed to say, uh, there is something I've been doing wrong this whole time. I was working out and not going to cryotherapy afterwards. I know. It's awful. I know. I know. Don't judge me. Eating cereal. You drink milk out of the bowl, right? I mean, I don't slurp it. I drink it uh, politely like a gentleman. No, I don't eat the soup. Nuh-uh. I eat the cereal out, but I guess I'm the same with all soups, too. I don't, like, drink the broth. I just, like, after I eat all the stuff out of it... I'm done. I have a basic one. I, I still throw all of my laundry in the same thing together. I don't separate anything. I think the, the detergents are just better these days. It's fine. Yeah, that's disrespectful. You're disrespecting your clothes. Learn how to wash your clothes. I guess I'm somewhere in the middle because I don't separate my clothes, but I also don't ever burn. But I also don't moisturize. Mari, yes, I do think detergent is better these days and you don't have to separate like we used to. But at the same time, did this non-separating of colored clothes from your your, your normal cl or plain clothes, uh, did that really just come from millennial laziness? Mine comes from laziness for sure, but it, it's also tested laziness because I've done it so often and there's been no consequences. The first time you do it, it's lazy, but then when you see it's like, oh, nothing bled, like my whites are still white. Once you see that, it's no longer laziness, it's just smart and a time saver. To everyone watching, go ahead and leave in the comments the things that you do that maybe you might be doing a little wrong and you're still okay with it. And before we move on to our any six questions and our jovenisms, we got a little segment here for you. This this episode of New Element 6 is brought to you by DND on the Dovenshire and Lasercorn's YouTube channel. That's right, there are two different campaigns with two different parties on two different adventures. Everything's better in twos. Now the adventure continues this Thursday and Friday. That's right, there's two episodes. Turns. Let's recap what happened. Both parties were sent to go find a horn. They went to this temple that had the horn. And they got there at the same time looking for this horn. But some bad guys are also looking for this horn. Everyone wants the horn. What's going to happen? Why not? this Thursday on the Jovenshire's channel and this Friday on youtube.com slash lasercorn and lasercorn is spelled with an S because some people think it's spelled with a Z but it's actually spelled with an S for the last 10 years it's been spelled with an S all right back to today's episode of NE6 Now we're in our segment that we do every single episode, Any Six Questions, where we take any six questions from you guys and we answer them here uh, in a little lightning round style. And because we have officially launched the Patreon and we do have some Elite Six members, we again want to shout out and thank you so much. Your questions from last month are now going to be popping up in the next month of shows. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull about two, maybe three of the uh, Patreon questions and put them in, but then still mix them with everyone else's questions. All you have to do is, you know, tweet us or put in an Instagram comment or comment down below. Just use the hashtag any six questions and we will go ahead and find those questions. Mari puts them together and we answer them. Uh, Mari, uh, why don't you hit us with some of those uh, Patreon questions first? All right, so this one comes from our official sugar person, Megan. 
All right, I love this question. Uh, this is, if you had a Freaky Friday situation with any other member of any six, who would you pick? This would last for 48 hours. Two days of being somebody else from the group. I think Mari and I have actually joked on camera and off camera on what our Freaky Friday would actually look like. Well, now I don't want a Freaky Friday. Well, you know what? But that doesn't mean that I, I was going to say, I don't want a Freaky Friday with you now because knowing how you wipe your butt. But I guess I would fix that during the two days. Yeah, you don't have to do what I do. Yeah, you got to walk around with poop in your butt crack for two days. I don't poop in my butt crack. Yeah, you do. You know, I think for me, I'm going to pick flits because I want to know the sensation of being able to do a backflip. Oh. You'd still have to try to do it in his body. Half of it is just confidence. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'd probably pick, man, I don't know. Probably Mari. You stole mine, but, you know. Well, yeah, boobs. I want to know what it's like to have boobs. Don't you defile my body. If I had 48 hours in your body, I would spend all of your money, Mari. And empty out all the blood bags? Yeah, I would empty out all the blood bags. Yeah. He'd be like super jazzed up on blood. And we were talking about flits can do like the breakdancing stuff. I kind of wonder what it would be like to be able to do all the ballet stuff. This is probably the cutest answer ever. Lizardcorn wants to switch bodies with me in order to dance. Right, I think it's your consciousness, but you're tapped into her brain, which has the knowledge of ballet. Yeah, I don't know though. I don't know if it would work. I, I'm gonna put an asterisk next to it because I would still have my brain and my brain is uh, famously rhythmless and terrible at dancing, so. We're getting a little away from lightning round because we're looking at the logistics of a Freaky Friday. You're right, next person. I was gonna say Joven, actually, for mine. Ooh, because the dogs. First of all, I uh, dogs, three dogs, that sounds like an amazing time. Second of all, I would mess with Joven a little bit by rearranging things in his house. Just like putting place, things in just the slightly wrong places. Hmm, fun experiment. So <laughs> it would be the ultimate gaming challenge. Can I play video games at the same level I do as me with Joven's eyesight? That's not cool, bro. That's not cool. <laughs> All right, next question comes from Skunkbomb123. What are your fursonas, AKA the personalized animal identity of a furry? My fursona would be some kind of probably, uh, I don't know, red panda. A uh, furry shark. Uh, I think my fursona might be might be a rabbit. I'm totally a wolf. Honestly, Flitz, I was going to say wolf as well. Also, I want to say my fursona of a wolf, I would have a tail and be super sexy. Fuchsia Angel asks, tell us about your weird talent. I got one, but it's not really like, it's definitely not a talent because I would suck at it now. But when I was in elementary school, I was pretty decent with devil sticks. Like a baton twirler? That is an interesting thing. I saw kids doing that. And I was like, that looks like fun. I'm not going to do it. Is that the sticks you click clack side to side? Yeah, you click clack them side to side and I could twirl it around one and I could throw it up in the air and catch it with the other one. And that was all I could do really, but I could do those. We had uh, my buddy Scott had a, a rope that he would tie to the trunk of his car. And then you would stand on a skateboard and go down the street. Get that! And I actually got pretty good at it. I I felt like I was like, way, it was, felt kind of like wakeboarding. He could definitely go the fastest with me on the back. I could never do any tricks like ollies or anything. When I was holding the rope, I was pretty decent on the, the rope skateboarding thing. Oh, I did wipe out one time really bad and nearly killed myself. He didn't have any medical supplies in his house. So I had to like take cotton balls and scotch tape and like tape myself back together. It's mostly just road rash, but uh... Lazercorn, I think your weird talent is how much pain you can endure. You basically went through an entire pancreatic burst. Pain endurance or stubbornness? Yeah, that was an appendix. Oh yeah, your appendix, your appendix. Could I possibly have to go through that again? Everything in your body can kill you, Lazercorn. Yeah, but the appendix is weird because it does, it serves no purpose other than to kill you. People in the audience know this, but I can talk like Donald Duck. Hello, hello. Um... Spitting everywhere, dude. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> That's good. I'm fairly synesthetic. So like when I see things, I can hear it. If it has no sound and it's visual, I basically see sound for everything. It allows me to like to do sound design. Like I love doing sound design because if I see something and it has no sound, if I can figure out the proper way to put the sound there, I know I can like, I can literally see it. You're basically Ratatouille, but with sounds. Next question is from Doi Lexian. What is your most underrated video game? For the original Xbox, it was called Breakdown. Uh, one, still to this day, one of my favorite games. Uh, and it was, it was incredible. It was a first person game, but you could, uh, it was the first time I had ever ever saw first-person martial arts in a video game. 
is really, really cool. For me, I think it's Breath of the Wild. It only got a 10 out of 10, and it deserves a 20 out of 10. Very underrated. It only got Game of the Year. It should have gotten Game of the Century, so. I agree with you. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer, Mari. I'm gonna go with GTA 2, the like last top down one. GTA 2 is a phenomenal game. I would say like story-wise, at least it's like pretty close to as good as the other ones. Like you'd be surprised how much story is there. And it has all the classic stuff, like uh like the announcer shouting out random stuff. Like if you killed a bunch of police in a radio, it'd be like Cop Kula and all that crazy stuff. But something people didn't know is if you got that game on PC, you could like TCP IP connect to people and like play multiplayer. It was really fun. But is that game underrated? I thought that was a fairly high rated game. Like people people mostly like that one. Well, people underrate that game compared to the other GTA games. Totally accurate Battlegrounds. Best uh, battle royale ever. Better than Fortnite, better than PUBG. I'll agree that it's better than Fortnite. Yeah, and PUBG. There's no better battle royale. It's a Shaolin versus Wu-Tang. Uh, it's this game, this fighting series on Steam. There's a part one and a part two, and I really think they're doing a lot of super duper cool, unique things in the fighting game that no other fighting game is doing. They model the different fighter characters after uh, movie counterparts. So like Bruce Lee, Jean-Claude Van Damme, Chuck Norris and stuff. It's really amazing. And they all do different, like different martial arts, right? Yeah, they all do different martial arts. And some, instead of blocking, sometimes your character will like dodge. So it's more like a fight scene and they do parries and counters and stuff. It's, it's really, really interesting. And they use the Mortal Kombat system. Let's, you know, a game you might appreciate. Uh, I don't know that you would like how it plays, but you might appreciate it. It's called Absolver. Yeah, I love Absolver. That's so this is the thing. I was going to say Absolver, but then I decided to go for an even more indie game with Shaolin versus Wu Tang. So, yeah, Absolver is amazing. Uh, a game I haven't talked about before yet. Uh, at least, dear God, I don't think I have. Uh, Steam World Heist. I think there are a bunch of different Steam World games, uh, but this one is a turn based strategy game uh, because I like my tactic style games, but this one not it's not top down it's a platformer and you're like robot steampunk pirates and you uh you have your different classes and you can shoot hats off of other robots and steal their hats it's, it's uh it's on steam it's on switch it's a lot of fun king joker 313 asks what's your favorite food and will there be any joven rages in any six videos oh you know that the joven rages are going to be coming <laughs> there that's already there i mean there basically already was yeah <laughs> we got close we got close! It was like adult Joven Rage. My frustrations will always uh, boil to the top while dealing with my friends. So Jov um, Joven Rage, I'm sure, is, is a thing to pop out. Though, you know, I try to meditate more and try to be more akin to, to my emotions and knowing that, you know, son of a bitch. <laughs> the word you were looking for was attuned. Nope, nope, oh, more akin to my emotions. Please write it down. The word you were looking for was attuned. We're not even at the end of the episode yet, Joven. I mean, that's next to right, for sure. Grandma spaghetti. Yeah, I would say my grandma's ravioli. For me, it's a uh, it's a, a food that I actually make and is not served anywhere else, but brownie pudding. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're all surprised. Favorite food it used to be lasagna. I just love enchiladas. I just enchiladas have bumped up to number one. I. Freaking love enchiladas. I love enchiladas. And it's so hard not to just say pizza. It's such a basic answer, but it's so phenomenal. I'm saying pizza. Pizza's delicious. You can say pizza. But well, to give us your specific pizza, what do you order on your pizza? My litmus test of how good a pizza place is is the cheese pizza, but if I'm getting toppings, I go pepperoni and jalapeno. Okay, that's a good combo. Okay, respectable. A little drizzle of ranch on top? Nope, absolutely not. Putting ranch on pizza is the equivalent of pooping after you get out of the shower. It's the pooping after you get out of the shower of pizza. What? No, come on! Come on! Jesus! Our last question comes from an official Elite Six member. This is from Michael Pittman. He's asked, if you could change one minor, seemingly insignificant aspect of our reality, what would it be? Example, envelopes moan when you lick them. That's <laughs> a hell of an example. I would want, and maybe this isn't as seamless as, as he was hoping for an answer, but I wish we all had natural soundtracks to what was happening in life. Do the soundtracks become cohesive when we're interacting with multiple people? Only we hear them? No, maybe maybe only when only we hear it because then it'll just be a mixture of too much sound. Uh, whenever you shoot a gun, it will literally make a pew noise. Pew, 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 pew. Man, imagine being so scared of that. It's, oh shit, it's going down. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> I would want uh, natural anime hair. 
I just want people to grow like light light purple hair and neon yellow hair and stuff like that. Animals, instead of making their default sounds that they make right now, they, they have to say their name like in Pokemon. Squirrel, squirrel, yeah. Dog, dog. <laughs> dog, 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 dog. <laughs> And that way you always know what animal it is. Yeah. One day you're out in the woods and you just hear like chupacabra. You're like, oh no, <laughs> they're real. I would make it so when you run a certain speed, you're no longer on the ground, but you don't really go that high, nor do you go any faster than you would normally run. You just kind of hop, yeah, but you still got to move your legs and put in all the same work, but your feet are like barely not on the ground. Whenever you fart, it doesn't make a fart sound. It says your name farted. Matthew Eric Sohinky farted. <laughs> and that concludes our any six questions. And again, right there at the end, we actually had one of the questions pulled straight from Patreon. If you're one of the elite six or our sugar person, uh, throughout the month, you will hear your guaranteed questions asked. But we are also pulling from the rest of the audience. Remember, hashtag any six questions, and we will answer your questions here. And before we get into our Jovenism, we just really want to remind everyone that we do have a Patreon down below where you can get an extended video version version of this entire show um, and also a bunch of other cool stuff like uh, Flitz is making wallpapers. We have Patreon only videos that go up once a month. So there's a lot of stuff to check out. So if you can and if you would like to, please support, but do not feel obliged to. Uh, I almost didn't pronounce the G in there and I didn't want to be made fun of. Also, the word was obligated. Uh, all right. So uh, before we wrap up, uh, who, who's got our, you know, I have the Jovenism. It's a good one from May 7th, 2015 when speaking about collaborating with other creators. We should ask Brizzy Voices. I've noticed there are a lot of layover between our fans. <laughs> Damn it. All right, and guys, that's been our show. That's New Element 6. Uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Bye. Do you know what the word you were going for is? Overlay? No! <laughs> Crossover. 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 That's the word. I've noticed there are a lot of cross or layover. I almost said it correctly. Uh, jeez. Did I just give a Jovenism in a Jovenism? Yes, you did. <laughs> God damn it.